actually in the screen. Yep, right in the bullseye middle. And it's recording. I don't like it. Why? Because you're not smiling or anything. Well, I'm not ready to shoot yet. <laughs> Hey there, all you frontier maniacs. Hey, it's FG at you again. Uh, got a new project here. Well, actually, it's a part of a new project. It's more of a uh, continuation, an upgrade of the project that was already going on. So let me zoom in here for you. Uh, we've got a new inline fuse holder uh, running over here to the battery block. Let me come over to this side. Show you what's going on over here. All right, so this is a 500 ampere capacity heavy duty relay uh, battery disconnect unit um you know basically just a super version of a relay really is, is what it is uh it's rated to carry um i think it's at a thousand amperes continuous uh and then be able to switch uh 500 amps uh without welding the contacts which you need to look at uh if you're looking at higher power higher throughput power on equipment that is um, battery level or, or something along that line. All right, so uh, what we've got here is actually six gauge wire, uh, and this runs, as I just showed you a second ago, over to the battery. Uh, I also have a ground wire, which is connected over on the battery side, the, the passenger side, at the uh, same grounding point that the uh, battery uh, factory cable is connected to. Both of those then come across here, and well, yeah, you're really not going to be able to see anything because everything's loomed. But anyway, um, so this one here, see where my finger, uh, that is coming down and going back around over to the battery. And this is the load side coming out here, which goes through this loom. And yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see this real well, but it wraps around here. And I very carefully, <laughs> let me see if I can get some angle here routed it down and it goes way down into the black hole that black hole being the driver's side of the engine bay carefully rooted along the side of the frame to avoid hitting the steering shaft because uh, you definitely don't want to be <laughs> attempting to steer your truck and find out that you've got a power cable wrapped around it that would really really tend to ruin your whole day very quickly uh, not only might it cause an electrical fire but uh, you might hit another vehicle or a pole or a tree or you know anything that you shouldn't hit so continuing on it comes down through the wheel arch behind the wheel well liner let me see if i can get a view for you in there yeah i think you'd see a little bit of it there anyhow all right and Continues underneath of here and is well tucked. Comes around the cab mount where the body bolt goes in and then goes over here into a piece of plastic conduit which I installed running all the way down the side of the truck here, all the way over. Comes up through here comes around, goes back up again, and comes over here to the rear wheel arch. Now if you remember in a previous project I had constructed these liners inside here to protect the inside of the bed uh, from stone hits and things of that nature, which actually turned out to be hugely beneficial for me because the wiring now is actually behind here. So I'm in a moment here, continue moving around. All right, so here we have uh, a smaller version of the fitting that I used in the wheel arch. Uh, it's not gonna be easy uh, to see, obviously, because it's all tucked in. And so I'm gonna give you an idea. This is a junction box uh, that I picked up. Um, at Lowe's or Home Depot, I don't remember anyway. Um, so the one that I use looks just like this, but it's a little larger. And uh, give me a minute here, I'm gonna climb into the bed and I'll show you where that is. All right, and so here you see the air manifold from before, you remember that. And here's the new piece. Here's the compressor now, 
which is plumbed in. Uh, apologies for everyone who's noticing what's going on in the background. That is the neighbor's Christmas music. It's uh, the 5th of December. Uh, and if you're watching this video sometime in 2023 and probably scratching your head going, what is that? Uh, it's the first week of December and uh, this um, music here runs in the neighbor's house pretty much 24 by 7. So anyway, back to the video. So let me give you okay so returning to what we've got going on here uh, so here are my two power relays uh, a, a 50 amp uh, busman uh, bus circuit breaker uh, the main power cables coming in and I added an, uh, an auxiliary fuse block which actually right now is not doing anything but I thought since uh, I had to build this board anyway it'd be nice to add one as you can see it's not painted it's um, planned to be uh, black when it's completed uh, however, unfortunately, the weather here uh, in Maryland right now is not conducive to uh, proper drying of paint. So that's going to have to wait until the spring. I'll just mark uh, everything on, on the locations where they were mounted and go ahead and just pull all the mounting screws out, take it apart, and, uh, and paint it. And um, I'm probably going to add a terminal block at the same time just to clean up the harness some. It's... Uh, it's functional, um, it's safe, it'll work, but I don't love exactly how everything looks right now, so that's going to be worked on. Uh, and so, uh, as I was mentioning, the wiring actually comes through. And so there's a view of the fitting. And you might be thinking, wow, why is that hole so big? Well, <laughs> that was one of those wrestling matches where I had a hole saw that were a couple of different sizes and one was very tight looked like maybe it would fit or maybe not and then this was the next size up unfortunately so I had to choose between them um, given how everything came out I probably would most likely try the smaller hole saw if I had to do this over again the problem with that idea is that uh, a hole saw you get one shot if you've ever used one of those they have a centering bit which uh, basically aligns the entire saw unit to the material that you're drilling and also uh, straight into your electric drill. And of course, therefore, at that point, you're just spinning the saw until you make a hole. And after that, you really can't go back with a larger one and uh, try to um, step size it up like you can with a standard drill bit. So unfortunately, that makes things a lot more difficult. So, now we come around to the compressor. So here we are at the compressor. Now, <laughs> here's where things get interesting. You'll see here on the end that the filter says ARB. Well, this compressor did not come with a filter. And so I went ahead and ordered two ARBs, one to have a spare. And they fit exactly onto this compressor. The other interesting thing that you'll notice, let me see if I can get a camera view here. This one isn't branded ARB. And it cost half as much as the ARB branded unit. And I ordered this from eBay. And as it was sitting there, they had photos on the ad. And I took those photos and compared them to the ARB compressor that was for sale on Amazon and it was listed as a genuine ARB. The interesting thing is that when you look at it, all the bolts and the housing and the wiring harness and everything is an exact match. So the question then is, is this really just a private brand ARB compressor? My personal opinion, I believe it is. I think that they are rebranding like Sears used to do all the time. They didn't make their own stereo equipment or refrigerators, Kenmore, any of that. They didn't manufacture anything. They branded things. So that's up to you. Take your chances. I decided to roll the dice and see how this came out. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised that this is a very good machine. Uh, it doesn't even get particularly hot and it can air up my three gallon storage tank from zero 
to 120 uh, in under three minutes. So it's pretty small, but uh, small but mighty, I guess you could say. So I'm, I'm very pleased uh, that this came in right around $180, whereas the one with an A or B stamp on it officially was just over 300. So, like I said, you make your own call. If, if, you, if, if you want the actual brand tagging, I mean, that's fine. Everybody's got a preference. I'm not going to uh, down anyone's choices. I'm just saying what I found out, and uh, I found that to be rather curious. The twin compressor model of this same type, which I'm going to go ahead and insert a photo right here in the video for you. The ARB branded that's stamped from their branding is $600 and change. Uh, however, if you get them with the non-branded, they look exactly the same as I'd mentioned before, down to the, the bolts and the harness and everything. It's very, very interesting, I'd say, at the very least. Um, that twin compressor setup is only a little over 300. Your choice. Anyhow, um, so this is my onboard air system, and it's nearly complete. Come back over here for a moment. Second regulator that I have installed. This one over here. Yeah, this is really hard to get the angles. Because the tonneau cover rolls up and blocks a lot of the space back here. But anyway, there's that. So if I fade back here, you see the second one. You can see this one's reading zero right now because it's not doing anything. I'm probably going to put a quick connect fitting right here where you can see that plug installed. Swap that out and be able to just plug in an airline, probably get a 25 footer with a chuck and just carry that around in the back of the truck with me when I'm uh, going somewhere off road. And uh, that way I can air down when I need to and if God forbid I happen to have an issue with a flat tire or anything of that nature. Uh, I'll be able to uh, just go ahead and add some air back in again and deal with it as it, as it comes. So anyway, uh, that is the progress so far. I'm going to be redoing a lot of this stuff in the spring. Like I said, the board I couldn't even paint. It was too cold. Um, it's in the, uh, the 40s uh, Fahrenheit here today, uh, and it's been in the 30s <laughs> for quite a bit of time. Uh, and it's not looking to improve. It's going to rain the rest of the week. So uh, the time for projects here uh, in, in Maryland that are <laughs> not inside any heated garage is drawing to a rapid conclusion. So we'll be picking up probably a lot of things in the spring. So thank you for everybody that's been hanging with the projects and seeing how things are progressing. I appreciate it. And uh, until next time, it's a Frontier Geek. Bidding you goodbye.